No bus. A Jess Pee's book club. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Chandelier by an original story by Miyako Kakami, translated by David Boyd and... No, oh, not the other dude. I did not realize that. That's fascinating. Uh, there's a whole interview at the end of this book about... Uh, from that was, I think, initially pub published in the Harvard Review, um, called Trans Translating Kawakami, an interview with Sam Bett and David Boyd that's all about their co-translation of, of Miyako Kawakami's other two books um, that have come out in English, uh, Breasts and Eggs and Heaven. I think Breasts and Eggs came out in 2020 and Heaven came out in 2021. Um, I didn't realize until literally I was saying this, even though it's very large on the cover that this is a this is a david boyd solo outgoing it's also as it says uh, an independent bookstore day exclusive um, and on the back you can read that it says an original short story exclusively for readers and a really low res graphic of uh, independent bookstore day uh, saturday april 30th 2022 um this is a this is a freebie that's giving out being given out at, at Independent Bookstore Day, um, which is a few days after I'm recording this. I nabbed it. I read it. I thought it was fine. Um, I have read both Breasts and Eggs and Heaven. Um, I had some issues with Breasts and Eggs personally, um, specifically around the sort of trans stuff that comes up in Reddit. In it, it was a little bit weird. Um, Heaven was a book that I didn't think I liked very much, but it stuck with me in a way that I was a little surprised by and um, sort of pleasantly surprised by. Um, I think overall I, I like Mieko Kawakami's work. Um, I, don't, I don't love it. Um, she works in a sort of a register that I think would have appealed to me as a reader um, a number of years ago and that doesn't not work for me now, but that just isn't kind of the same sort of like... Hmm. Let me back up. She she writes in a very sort of social realist kind of way. Um, very, very tight um, internal, uh, you know, first person perspective, very tight on the on the woman she's writing from. I, I guess Heaven, the narrator, is a, a young man, um, but it's it's very internal, um, sort of it's very literary, very, very like um, here are a handful of moments structured in um, a way that's not particular that's not particularly propulsive, but that is it is good at you know elucidating certain aspects of a person's life or um, bringing out uh, sort of big thematic sweeping gestures. Um, not a thing I'm opposed to, um, just not where my head is at most of the time these days. Um, this short story, Heaven, wait, <laughs> incorrect. This short story, Chandelier, Heaven is a short novel. Um, Chandelier is about a woman in her like late forties, I think, is sort of the gist. Um, who spends all of her day at a department store, all of her days, every day, mm -hmm. at a department mm -hmm. store. Um, it's sort of uh, you get a little bit of a backstory, like about halfway through. This is also about thirty-three pages in this book. This tiny, tiny, tiny book. Um, this would be, I think, a, you know, like a medium long short story on the internet would be my guess. Um, also, like I was saying, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of shittily printed, but that's fine. It's a freebie for independent bookstore day. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's also like, it has, you can't really see that at all. Um, it has like some sort of, uh, it's weird how the, the quality is bad. Again, you can't see it, but like you can sort of see the pixelation on the letters if you look close. But also, it's got like, you know, the front page is green. Then there's a, there's a pink one. Um, there's like a pink and green thing going on um, throughout it. It's it's got like an interesting color coding. There's you know the the back matter is all in different colored pages. Um, it's not like it's not like they put no production value into it, but there's a there's a there's a there's a weirdness <laughs> to the production value of these little things. Um, uh, yeah, so it's like a short thirty three pages. I, I don't know, like three thousand words, four thousand words would be my guess. Maybe maybe as many as six thousand, but I doubt that. Um, 
maybe it's six thousand. I don't know. Um, I didn't I didn't run it through a word processor or account. Um, but yes. So there's this woman, uh, whose name I think is given, but I don't remember. Uh, mm, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, she she spends all of her days in her in the department store, and the sort of and the opening is sort of this like potentially imagined or or sort of um, concatenated or agglomerative um, thing where she's like she she sort of tell she sort of brings up the like conversation that happens to her again and again of people being like oh do you do you like doing that do you like spending all day at a department store and then you know feeling like she's being judged for being a super materialist person um, unlike a, uh, a like a Murakami uh, there is a bit in this where it actually does explain why she's able to afford to do this, which is um, a, a nice, a nice materialist touch uh, <laughs> that uh, I, I always miss from Murakami, who I, I mainly bring up because they have had um, conversations. Murakami has like advocated for Kawakami and and brought her books up, and there is a very long interview between Kawakami and and Murakami that I haven't. Read the entirety of, but I did read the parts where he talks about, or where she asks him about um, his uh, relatively, um, how do you say, uh, two-dimensional women characters. That was, I thought, a, a pretty interesting conversation. Um, but yeah, so she, uh, you know, she has been boosted by him. She has uh, interrogated him. Um, I think their styles are not wildly divergent. I think there's a there's a reason that, that interchange has happened. Um, The title of the story, Chandelier, comes from uh, the fact that this woman, um, the department store that she walks in has a giant chandelier that she is like, at one point is basically like, this thing is so massive and, and so full of intricate parts that it has to fall down one day, and I know for a fact that I will be standing underneath it when it falls. Um, it's, a good, it's a good little bit of, of sort of... Uh, it's a good bit of psychologizing, I think, a, a good way of of indicating that a character doesn't necessarily like hyper fixate on a thing, but but has a, a very particular relationship with a space that sort of speaks to her, both um, interest and aimlessness in it, um, and also just like a general sort of you know. You know, literary fiction. Some some ennui is happening here. Um, the sort of major events of the book. Um, let me let me back away from that for a second. Um, I will say just sort of high level overview. I th this is this is like a perfectly pleasant read. Um, if you if you pick it up from an independent bookstore day, you should read it. Whenever it comes out online or gets turned into a novel, it might be interesting. Also. Um, the the structure is like just like a really solid you know a really solid literary fiction short story like i said it opens with her sort of like giving you a sort of imagined conversation that is made up of multiple actual conversations theoretically of like her whole deal and like how people react to it it walks you through her whole deal you get these little moments of things like being obsessed with the idea that the chandelier will be the thing that kills her eventually and and you know the fact that she wrote some jingles for an exercise bike like 30 years ago and then got a random phone call that meant she got um uh oh my god i'm blanking on the oh my god oh no um it's not residuals but um um royalties that she's getting royalties that like back pay of royalties and that's like sort of why she's able to afford to just hang out in a department store all day and like buy a couple things here and there um the sort of major and and you get a little bit of backstory about her and her mother also and and like the the career she sort of had before she became independently wealthy based on ro like back royalties basically um the, the <laughs> There, there is like one major sort of incident in this book, like one, one action, one, one big event, like that happens in real time. Um, that is basically that like she sees an older woman who's like dressed perfectly in in Gucci or 
Dolce or something like that. I don't remember. You know, it's a designer brand. It's a recognizable designer brand. Um, she sort of strikes up a friendship with this woman. Uh, this goes over like, you know, 10 pages, so like a third of the book, maybe. Um, uh, they like go on different, uh, maybe it's more like six or seven pages, but whatever. I don't, whatever. It's been a few days. Um, they, you know, go to a bunch of stores together. They have conversations. She is telling this older woman about how she lives with her mother, who we know is dead, and, um, you know, sort of leading her on, and ends up getting a, a really nice gift out of her, and then puts her in a taxi, and um, uh, I randomly flipped this earlier when I was just flipping through pages, so let's see if I can't uh, really quickly. Yeah. Um, this is, I guess, a spoiler. <laughs> um, sort of the, this is the, the, the climax of the book, book I guess, the story. Um, and now I'm going to just read a couple paragraphs, because um, I can say as much as I want about literary fiction and, and blather on and, and then, you know, re- correct myself a um, hundred times but um, here's a here's a sample of at least me reading the uh, the actual prose of this thing when we got to the taxi stand the attendant took the woman's bags and put them in the trunk of the car the woman smiled at me with her wrinkled face as she climbed into the back seat that was so much fun she said give my regards to your wonderful mother I leaned in so my face was right next to hers give her what the woman stared at me like she had no idea what I was saying I'm asking you, I said, give my mother what? She blinked over and over. You shitty, worthless, old hag. Smiling from ear to ear, with my eyes locked on hers, I enunciated every syllable slowly and carefully, as if I were teaching a new phrase to a small child who'd recently started learning how to talk. You can go, I said. <laughs> I said, you can go, I said softly to the driver. The door slammed shut between us, and I watched as the taxi drove away with her inside. Um, yeah, it's a it's, it's a strong moment again. I think that speaks to the sort of character that this woman is. That um, not not that she is. Um, it speaks to to her as a character, and also to sort of the environment that she is she's found herself in. To, to cultural issues, um, to human things. I think I think all of those are true. I also, you know, sometimes sometimes I want a big robot or whatever. I guess I don't really like robots very much. Sometimes I want a good slasher. Uh, sometimes I, I I don't know. Um, sometimes my brain is just not in the space for for these sorts of stories, and it's it's kind of not right now. Um, you, but I think I can still recognize when one is is you know well done versus incredibly well done versus just kind of middling. And I think this is like a well done little story. Um, the, the sort of rest of it is, is the narrator's um, cab ride back where she sort of connects with this younger woman who's like in her early twenties and has, you know, just started driving cabs and they have a little conversation about like how this younger woman's mom sends her a picture of her pet catfish every day and, and like how much she likes driving and stuff like that. And, and the narrator is like bawling over both that interaction she had with the older woman and, and this conversation and, you know, her, you know, presumed eventual death by chandelier or whatever. Um, and, and I think it's like a, I don't think it's a particularly powerful story. I think it's a, it's just a really solid little thing uh, that is free, even for people who aren't me. And so you don't work at a bookstore where you can just kind of kind of borrow some stuff. Um, cool. Uh, this is like this is like basically as long as it took me to read the book. That's, it seems like a perfect amount of time uh, to uh, go ahead and try to remember my outro because it's uh, you know I've done one of these recently. Um, there we go. <laughs> Thanks for not watching.